can't sleep. You envy that kid next to you. Swabbies can sleep anywhere. But you can't sleep because you're keyed up. You're going home. Home to Culver Springs. You've been out there 14 months and you're tired. Dog tired. You're tired from flying 52 long, tough combat missions in a P-38. But you feel good about one thing. You're going home. And when you land, she'll be waiting for you at the airport. Catherine. She'll be there. And when you feel her in your arms, those 14 months will melt away like a ground haze in the morning sun. Packard A. Cummings, 1st Lieutenant Army Air Forces, dog tag number 0451859. You're headed for home, and Catherine will be waiting. Well, here you are, Lieutenant Cummings, home from the wars, and you're scared stiff as you look for that one beautiful face. And then you see her. And brother, she looks so good, it makes you catch your breath. Packy! Hello, oh, how wonderful to see you. Hello, Aunt May. Hello, darling. Oh. How you look? Man, how are you? Susan? Hello, Hello, Packy. Hello, Packy. Hello, Hello, Packy. <laughs> Fourteen months you've waited for this moment. And it's just as good as you dreamed it would be. Packy, my boy. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Newton. I didn't want to miss interviewing the town hero. How's it feel to get back? Yeah, it feels good. You never were a kid to talk much. How many planes you knocked down? Many as your old man last for? Well, I got one zero, Mr. Newton. Oh, but you said you... Oh, you talk too much. What about the Jap pilots, huh? George, you can get your story in the morning. He's tired. We're all going up to the house. I have some nice coffee and sandwiches ready. It's funny. First thing I get to eat when I get home is a Spam sandwich. <laughs> Packy. You told Mr. Newton you only got one zero. Well, even in the citation, it said that you were responsible for 200 jet planes. Records 26, Joe Foss. But it was 200. Even the general said so. Packy, what was it like out there? Oh, it wasn't too bad. No, you don't feel like talking about it. Not now. But as you sit there with Catherine, it all flashes through your brain, fast and clear. All right, ready on Citizen of the United States. Citizen of the United States. Do hereby acknowledge. Do, do hereby, hereby acknowledge. To have voluntarily enlisted. To have voluntarily enlisted. This date, December 8th, 1941. This day, December 8, 1941, in the Army of the United States, in the Army of the United States, for the duration of the war plus six months. For the duration of the war plus six months. <laughs> special thrill when they solo you at primary. You've got nothing to worry about. Flying's in your blood. And when you're in an airplane, you're home. 
Is that your kid up there soloing? Yeah, but there's nothing to worry about. He can fly better than I can. That's Wild Bill Cummings' kid. You breeze through primary and basic, and by the time you reach the heavier stuff in advanced, you feel it won't be long now until you get into the kind of airplane you know you are made for, the fighters. Well, from then on, things move quickly. you get your assignment. Fighters. That's your baby. A custom-made job. $75,000 FOB Burbank. Cash. Twin-tailed. All the latest features. Kingpin of the fighters. Hello, Packy. Glad to have you with us. Well, thank you, Colonel Henry. You were bound to wind up in fighters. What do you hear from your father? Well, he's in Australia, sir. He just got his star. He's commanding the 138th Fighter Wing. I hope you get in his command. He's a good man to fly with. Oh, the things Wild Bill Cummings could do with a spat. 22 Germans he got in the last show. Well, it gives me something to shoot at, sir. Yes, I guess he's as good a fighter pilot as ever lived. Well, drop in and see me. Yes, sir. You learn to fly that airplane. You're doing good work, and you feel good. Until that night. Lieutenant. Lieutenant? Yes. yes. There's a long distance call for you, sir. I think it's your mother. Thank you. Oh, hello, Ma. All right, let's have it. How did it happen? On a mission, huh? Keep your chin up, Ma. I'll get a pass and try to get the first plane out in the morning. I should be there by tomorrow afternoon. Keep your chin up, Ma. Tell me you're good. You're number one in your class. Ready to ship. What theater, sir? Well, you're not going to a theater. You're being assigned to a reconnaissance training unit. You're going in an F-5 outfit. F-5? Oh, but Colonel... Well, as you know, it's a stripped-down P-38. It's an awfully good airplane, due close to 450, straight and level. I know that, sir, but no guns. That's right, no guns. It's an airplane to do one job, to fly a camera. Sir, you said I was number one in my class. I've worked my head off here to become a fighter pilot. I want to kill Japs. That's what Dad would want me to do. Why pick me to fly a camera? Because you're the best fighter pilot here, and it takes the best to fly reconnaissance. Look here, Packy. I'm all for good fighters myself. But reconnaissance is important, and I know one thing. If Wild Bill Cummings was sitting right here at this desk, he'd tell you to do the job they give you to do. I'll be a good soldier. Good luck, Lieutenant. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Gonna fly a brownie.
introducing you to the K-17 and K-18 aerial cameras. This K-18 can take pictures from 30,000 feet that'll pick out the eggs in a robin's nest. And they're the only excuse for ever taking an F-5 into the air. Yeah, think how many Japs you can kill with them. They pour it on at reconnaissance training. Navigation, tests in the high altitude chamber, the link trainer, radio, the Allison engine, photography, and one high altitude mission after another. You have to fly high because you have no guns, and altitude and speed are your only protection. You're not happy. It's a chauffeur's job. You don't want to photograph Japs. You want to pour lead into them. But you do your job and beef as little as possible, even though you're sick at not being in fighters. And then one day, three months later, you look down and you're flying over the Owen Stanley Range in New Guinea, on the other side of the world. It's your first mission, and you're going a long way from your base. You're headed for Kawea. Your job is to photograph a big airdrome the Japs are building there. According to the intelligence officer who briefed you, this is a very important haul. Now we're keeping an eye on the Kawea airdrome, because one of these days when it's finished, the Nips are going to start piling airplanes up there for a big push south. We have to be ready for it, or we're going to be in trouble. Now, take off at 1100. And when you get within 150 miles of the target, be sure you're up at least 25,000 feet. You're not too impressed. You're playing Indian Scout. The only difference is the Indian Scout had guns, and all you've got is that 45 automatic. That's for snakes in case you're forced down over the jungle. You're all alone behind the enemy lines. You're your own pilot, navigator, radio man, and photographer. And that sky is about the loneliest place in the world. Then you're near the target. The squints are putting up the ak, -ak intense and accurate. It's your first time under fire, and suddenly you realize something. It's a surprise. Those guys are trying to kill you. But you're too high and going too fast. You reach your spot, and you reach up and push the button. When you press that button, you start a camera going. And the Kawea airdrome is beneath you. You don't see an airplane. And it beats you why they should want pictures of tractors and men with picks. Some job for a guy that wanted to kill Japs. So you start for home. You make it back to Port Moresby, your base, without incident, as they say in the communiques. Well, Photo Joe, what did you see? What did you do? Got four zeros. You spitballs. Very unsanitary. They unload your cameras, rush the negative to the portable lab, develop it, and make prints. You're doing this because you understand the conscientious recon pilot always follows his pictures through to see how they turn out. Very pretty. I'll take two dull and two glossy. You're now a full-fledged photo Joe and the name gripes you. You're fed up to the ears, but there's nothing you can do about it. You do your job as well as you can and keep your beefs to yourself. And you fly that F-5 on mission after mission. You fly the milk run to Kawea. You photograph jungles and beaches. But a tree's a tree and a strip of sand is a beach. And from five miles up, they all look alike. The war seems far away. You realize that men are fighting and dying in those pictures you get, but it seems as remote to you as if you read about it in the newspaper. More months pass. Today, you're headed back for the Kawea Airdrome. You've photographed it so many times, you know it like the palm of your hand. But you've never seen an airplane there. As far as you're concerned, the Kawea run is still a waste of time. You're knocking it off at 350 miles an hour at 28,000 feet and you're getting close to Kawea. And you see trouble. A nip patrol of five zeros. You drop your belly tanks. They don't want you to photograph that airdrome. Why? Your 
oxygen's gone. Down you go. Without oxygen, you can only stay conscious for 30 seconds at that altitude. Your heart hammers and you fight to keep from blacking out. You're out of range. You've still got a job to do. Photograph that airdrome below you. You get set for your camera run and head in. They're putting up everything they've got. Your cameras are running. Then you look down. And there's nothing there. You can't figure it out. Get in those clouds. first reconnaissance pilot in history to down an enemy fighter without guns. As you head for home, you feel swell. Your old man would be proud of you. There's someone. That's Packy, all right. Better stand for the meat wagon. He's been hit. Never mind. It doesn't matter much. Nice going, Packy. Out of boy, Good Packy. work, Lieutenant. On Lossy's spotter report, you got a zero. It's been confirmed. Congratulations. Boy, did we have fun. <laughs> Lieutenant, you must have flew the ears off that job. Let me shake your hand. Thanks, Mac. All right, now let's get that hand taken care of. Okay, I'm willing. You're pretty proud. No matter how you look at it, you were really flying that airplane. Well, you gotta uh, do better than that, Pete. Wait a minute, wait a minute. That calls for a toast. Here's to the F-5. The rabbit of the blue New Guinea skies, except when it's flown by Packy Cummings, when it becomes a killer. That's <laughs> what he could have done with a shotgun. Any of you guys on the hey, hey. hey! I've just come from the bomber command. Every bomber on the island's pulling out. Must be a terrific mission. Well, where are they going? Kauia. Listen. Let's go. Come on. later, the CO sends for you. Your brain's in a tailspin. You can't figure out what was on those pictures. And why is the CO sending for you? Probably to give you the good word for knocking down that zero. Yep. Any way you look at it, this has been a big day for you. And it's gonna get a lot bigger. Sit down, Lieutenant. Thank you, sir. How about Cummings' mission? 
Very good pictures of the Kauai Aerodrome, sir. The conditions under which Lieutenant Cummings got them were extremely hazardous. He was attacked by 10 enemy airplanes, but flew to the target and got his pictures anyway. Good. Very commendable, Cummings. You acted in the best tradition of reconnaissance. It's good stuff. I'm going to recommend very strongly that you be cited. Thank you, sir. And how about the zero the lieutenant got? Was it confirmed? Yes, sir, it was. Attacked by this enemy plane, Lieutenant Cummings, through superior combat flying, forced him into the sea. Well, to that lieutenant, you'll be grounded and confined to quarters. You think you've gone nuts. You can't be hearing right. What did you say, sir? That's right, grounded and confined to quarters. But why? I'll show you. Pull up your chair. Here are the pictures you took at Kauia Aerodrome. You couldn't see anything, but your camera did. This is the picture before and after. See these camouflaged airplanes? There and there. Very clever disbursement. There are 200 airplanes at Kauia, or were. And all our bombers and fighters have gone after them. You used your head when you figured there was something up when that Jap patrol came after you. And you risked your life going over the target at a dangerously low altitude to get your pictures. And then you had to spoil it. Cummings, how could you dare risk not getting those pictures back by going into that wild circus act with that fighter? Do you realize those 200 planes in a surprise attack could have wiped out our air insulation in this area? That might have changed the whole course of the war. You wanted to be a fighter pilot, didn't you? Because of your father, probably. You never stopped to think that a reconnaissance pilot is the greatest mass killer of them all, did you? Why, in the Battle of the Bismarck Sea, a recon plane killed 15,000 Japs just by spotting that fleet concentration. A radio message from that single airplane sent a whole air force into action. That's responsibility, my boy. And that kind of responsibility can't be handled by men who want to fight zeros without guns. Let me tell you a few facts about reconnaissance. It supplies 90% of our air intelligence today. In the Battle of Tunisia, it saved thousands of lives. Montgomery and Eisenhower both stopped the war for two days because they wouldn't move without pictures. The fate of every soldier in this war is determined every day by the pictures you men bring in. Think about that the next time you want a horse around playing the big ace, will you? That's all.
First Lieutenant Joseph Kilgore, Air Medal. Well, it came out all right. The destruction of that Jap air fleet taught you your lesson. Because now you know that more and better aerial pictures will end this war just that much sooner. First Lieutenant Packard A. Cummings, Distinguished Service Cross. Congratulations, Lieutenant Cummings. Thank you, sir. You can say, and rightly so, that you were responsible for the destruction of 200 enemy aircraft. Your father would have been very proud of you. Yes, sir. You know now that our photo Joe is a big man in this scrap. You've been on 52 missions. Now they're gonna send you home to instruct. Think of the yarns you can spill to your kids. Because, brother, you've been to war. She wants to know what it was like. You'll tell her, someday. But right now, you don't feel like talking. It wasn't so bad. It wasn't bad at all. Of course, we had to do without this. The film you've just seen is fiction, of course. That is, the part about my being a general's son and all that. But the adventures I went through are real. And these are the two men who actually did the things on which the film was based. This is Major Alex Gary, the most decorated recon pilot in our Air Forces. He's the one who's blamed for forcing the Jap Zero into the water. And this is Major Arthur L. Post, who, among other things, spent 100 days in the jungles of New Britain before finally returning to his base. That's the DSC. They're home on leave, and when that's over, they'll return to the South Pacific. Is there anything you'd like to say, gentlemen? I'm not good at this. I get nervous. Major Post? We'd rather be in the South Pacific. Not as many automobiles or reckless drivers. <laughs>